Hey friends, welcome to One Little Coder. In this applied NLP tutorial, we're going to learn how to use Bloom. Bloom is the open source alternative, the closest open source alternative of GPT-3, where we can use Bloom and then generate text. So in this applied NLP tutorial, we're going to learn how to use Bloom to generate blog posts and articles. So if you are a content creator, if you are a marketer, if you want to write articles on your website, if you want to create copies, this video is going to help you how you can create your own blog posts or articles using Bloom. Before we get into the video, I would like to give you um, a caution, a warning to say that, you know, this, this is a model that has been trained using a lot of text. So it's possible that this might spit out toxic substance, toxic content. It's, it's the it you you as a creator should be mindful of it you as a creator should be should make sure that you are not going to use those content for ethical reasons so please make sure that you know um, you don't use any toxic content or any biased content from this thing and if you also get it please report it back to the bloom team and they'll happy to take the feedback and without further ado let's get started and understanding how we can use bloom to create content blog post articles the first step here is I've got a Google Collab Notebook and then this Google Collab Notebook as you can see that I've enabled GPU that will help you for faster inference like if you want to do inference it's going to be faster so make sure you have got a GPU environment just like in this case Google Collab Notebook. This Google Collab Notebook will be in the YouTube description so you don't have to create all these things from scratch but if you want to do it I'm going to go through line by line for you to understand what is happening in each line. The first step in this is we are going to install the transformers library. So first install transformers library. The next thing is once you successfully install transformers library from transformers, we need to import three auto model for causal LM and auto tokenizer and set seed. This is to download the model and you know, this is basically to get the model. This is to do tokenization, get the tokenizer. And this is if you want to regenerate something that you have generated before, Ideally, it is not possible because every time it generates something new because there is a randomization happening in the back end. But if you want the same thing again, then you can use the seed, set seed to create, create the pseudo randomization to create, get something back. Now we are going to download a huge model, uh, which is in this case a 1 billion um, model. So it may not be like by default when you get, um, uh, when you get Google Collab, let me show you what machine you would get. NVIDIA SMI. So you can see this, when you do this thing, you'll get the configuration of what is the code, the, the machine that you have got. In this case, we have got a Tesla T4. So mostly for you to download larger models, you need to be really lucky to get, um, get a slightly uh, more, comp more heavier machine. But uh, because we usually get this machine, um, we don't get something like, uh, uh, p100 or something like that so i think it's 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 it is really hard for you to download a huge model so in that case what you do a little hack that i learned recently i've got a separate video for that is to default convert all your tensors into CUDA tensor even before you get into the computation so this will help you allocate the memory memory allocation in the gpu memory than the cpu memory so you can click this and then you can see you've got cpu memory you've got gpu memory and then you've got disk storage and you can see my gpu memory is already highly allocated highly used primarily because i've, I've done um, i've done the cuda um, i've done the default tensor type to cuda tensor so it's this will help you in short this will help you load large language models on the machine that google uh, google collab assigns you the next thing is um, we have going to download the model and the tokenizer so this path comes from um, the hugging, hugging face uh, bloom um, the link that you have here so you can see the same link um, and this is a different checkpoint you can you can download a smaller model as well in this case i'm using the 1 billion model but if you want a smaller uh, model there is a different checkpoint where you get a smaller model as well and uh, now if you are if you have a question like well, how, how how does it matter the larger the model size the better your um, the text generation would be the smaller model may not be as good as gpt3 because we are talking about a true gpt3 alternative i'm um, i'm using a larger model in this case we are going to download the model then we're going to download the tokenizer once we have the model and then we have the tokenizer the next step is for us to set the seed value we need to set the seed value which uh, we are going to use to reproduce uh, if we have to reproduce the text the next thing is we are going to set the model class uh, i mean this is just not not set the sorry 
I'm just displaying it to you so that you know that we are actually using blue model. Um, I'm not doing any black magic under the hood to have GPT-3 because uh, sometimes what people think is that um, what is not what is shown cannot be reproduced. Like a lot of YouTube videos would show fancy stuff, but when you try to recreate, you might not exactly do it. I don't want my tutorials to be like this. I want to make sure that we are actually using Bloom large language model to do what we're going to do. Next thing, next thing is to make it slightly easier. I'm going to explain the prompt, but to make it slightly easier, I've created this thing called a blog post title. This is an object where you can define the title of the blog post that you want. So for example, for me, where did I get this title from? I was, uh, I was listening to a blog post from uh, Farnham Street. Um, I think the, the name of the blog post, uh, the, the name of the website is I think Farnham Street. So here, uh, recently they interviewed an Indian entrepreneur Kunal Shah and the title of the blog, uh, title of the podcast is Core Human Motivation. So I was like, okay, what if I have to write an article that states core human motivation and that is my objective here. So I have got an object, a string, a basically a smaller string called blog post title. So if you're going to use this Google Collab Notebook for your own purpose, so this is the place where you have to add your add, replace this with your own blog post title. Now comes the main part, like the important thing of this entire video is here, which is the right prompt that you give will help you in generating the right set of content. For example, when you're going to give a prompt to a large language model like Bloom, you need to make sure that you're not talking to it. This is not a conversation that is happening. It's not a chatbot where you're asking something. Rather, what you want to design or how do you want to design your prompt is you need to keep in your mind that imagine you have got a web page and then there is something at the starting of the web page and then now you're going to complete the sentence. I don't know if you have ever done it, but when I have studied in high school, we used to have this fill in the blank. There is to be something and then there used to be a dash and then we used to fill in. Sometimes we used to start writing based on that, you know, for prose writing um, essay competition. So just that is what Bloom is going to do. Bloom is not having a conversation with you. Rather, Bloom is going to take what you have at the top and then Bloom is going to create a coherent set of text based on what you have given and that is prompt. So now how I am designing my prompt in this case, which has worked out quite well for me so far, but you are completely free to do it if you want. I've, I've created an F string and in that F string I've said, this is a blog post on the blog title, which in this case is, this is a blog post on, let me show it, prompt. This is a blog post on core human motivations and a new line that says core human motivation space. So that the first line of the blog post starts with that. I did this so that it is easier. Like for example, a lot of marketers watch my content, a lot of um, SEO experts, a um, lot of um, people who are content creators, like not, not YouTube video creators, but like content writers. So I wanted to make it easier for them where you can just simply take the Google Collab, watch this video and then start creating your own um, articles. But if you understand prompt, you want to play with this, this, this is, this is the place where you can play with that. And I would show you also some examples, how you can tweak your prompt so that you can get different kind of articles. So right now, this is how it looks. The next thing is we are going to use a tokenizer to encode our input text. Like this is our prompt. We have taken it and then we are going to encode it and I'm going to encode it. And then we are going to generate content, um, generate sample based on that. One thing that you need to keep in mind is right now, if you see, I've got th four parameters here. Maximum length indicates the length that I want to generate. The top K and temperature can help you generate diverse content. So always play with that. So this, I think starts from zero. This also starts from zero. So you can always play with this to create diverse content, Start, you know, set zeros. Like there is no right answer for it. You can play with it. The repetition penalty is here. The default value is one. The reason why we have repetition penalty is by default, when it sets to one, it would repeat a lot. For example, I can set one or I can even for that matter not give this and then I can generate and then I can print text. So what I'm doing is maximum length 200, top K is one and temperature is 0.9. You can read in detail about what is temperature here, what is top K here. But when there is no repetition penalty, you can see this is a blog post on human motivations, core human motivation, core human motivation is a blog post on core human motivation. You can see how it is just repeating itself. 
so to avoid that what i'm setting is i'm setting a repetition penalty of two just be mindful of the value that you set the higher the repetition value is sometimes your text might become less coherent because it's trying to avoid repetition or if it repeats you're going to penalize it so two seemed fair to me so i'm setting two and then i'm going to print it now you would see slightly more coherent text or at least i assume but because i'm running it um, live in front of you um, you can see okay so now the repetition penalty is two there is no other parameter other than just max length top k temperature and what we see here is this is a blog post on core human motivations core human motivations the ultimate guide to understanding your workforce core human motivations are the most important motivators of employees for employees they drive your business and help your <laughs> help your core hrm a complete reference manual and blah 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 and then you have got coherent text but in my opinion is this really good enough um i would say not really can i can i like literally take this and start um posting it on a google doc or a wordpress uh, compost post page no i wouldn't do it i i would have to do a lot of tweaking so what i'm going to show you next is a slightly tweaked or advanced version until now you can simply you know you can pause this video go ahead and then start creating content but if you want to tweak more i'm going to introduce a couple of more parameters that will help you create more coherent and diverse content now you saw what we generated here i'm going to show you the next one which is this when you read this this actually looks like something that has been written by human being for example the starting points are almost same but then you see three points self actualization social connection achievement under self actualization your self actualization is the desire to be successful in life it is the desire to achieve something very coherent um, almost like kunal sir social connection is the desire to connect with others it is a desire to feel valued and loved it is a desire to have a sense of belonging and you can see the text is more meaningful more coherent more diverse and uh, now i can literally take this and then put it put it on a compost compost post new post wordpress or a medium or a, um wherever you write your blog post google doc and it happened because we have introduced a set of new parameters i'm not going to explain what these parameters are but i'm going to just tell you that certain important things num beams number of beams by default is 1 uh, now i have introduced it to i have made it to 2 number of beams imagine if you want to search a lot of places a lot of different angles when you are generating content imagine that is like your number of beams so it's trying to search a lot of different angles to create content that is what number of beams and number of rooms um, number of beams of groups and diversity penalty also will help you generate more diverse content so now when we use this and then when we generate content we get something like this to quickly summarize we install the transformers library we try to understand what machine we have it is make a lot of difference uh, then we loaded um, auto model for causal lm tokenizer and set seed converted or set the default value tensor type where we have said that we have to force convert all our tensors into cuda tensors which is to leverage gpu memory then download the model download the tokenizer set the seed value for reproducibility just to make sure that the model is the right model and then we have the blog post title we have created the prompt we have used that prompt and encoded it as input ids and then used that input ids to generate the model and i'm um, sorry generate the content and then we have decoded it and then got the exact text value we also saw an advanced version where we can generate better text and then get more content so now at this point you have entire idea about how to generate blog posts and articles using bloom now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to change the title of this so that you know that this actually works again when you want to customize it and then see um, how can we uh, like how can you generate new content so for this once again what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to farnam street and then i'm going to click back and then see other blog posts and then pick one of the titles so i'm going to say peak um peak mental sorry this is the essentials of leadership this looks good to me the copy essentials of leadership come back to my collab and then paste it here so this is the place where i'm going to replace my title run 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 i'm going to just simply i ran everything and then i'm going to wait for the result and then see how is it generating content is it good or not so this thing really requ requires a lot of tweaking prompt tweaking parameters if you do not um like the result but so far this has worked out very well for me the prompt and um, and, and the 
response. Okay, so what is it? Um, this always kinds of treats it like question and answer and you can see the first thing you need to know about leadership it is it doesn't matter what your job title or position, blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to just skip over and then go to the final part. So essentials of leadership by Michael J. Allen. So this is this is now a concern because maybe it could be a new person. It's a book that I have, um, I've been reading for months that it has helped me understand how to be a leader in real life. It is a book that will help you understand what leadership is, why it is important and then you can see and you can see how it has gone. So now you can try to avoid these kind of things like having a human name and all those things. Uh, but that, that again, that depends upon like everything that you tweak here, like what kind of input you give. For example, I can completely have something else other than blog post. Um, say is very important and then I can run this. Now I assume maybe it wouldn't get a human name there and then do it because um, now I'm I'm taking this entire text generation in a totally different direction with my different prompt, and um, and you know again this is this is again good but I would still wait to see what is the okay leadership is a process that involves um, that that involves influencing people to achieve goals leaders have to influence people to achieve their goals they have to motivate people to achieve their goals they have to inspire people to achieve goals they have to guide people to achieve goals and so on and then you can see, also see you know there is a different line so. In, in in my opinion, I'm, I'm not an expert, I'm not a content um, writer, I'm not a technical writer, I'm not, I, I write technical blog posts, but I don't consider myself to be a content writer in, in the first place. So I would, uh, I would suggest you to play with this model and try it out, see how it works out. But um, the fact that we have got an open source model that we can run on Google Colab, that is as good as GPT-3, which is a paid tool that is, I think right now available only for a people who can pay money, put credit card or Microsoft Azure users. I think that this is really a blessing, um, especially if you're in marketing, content, content writing, anything like that. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, as mentioned, this Google Collab notebook will be in the YouTube description where you can just click it, copy it into your own space and then right away start creating content without, without having to do any setup or configuration. I would love to see what you created. What is your opinion about this thing? Um, any questions, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, I hope you stay safe. Take care. Happy programming. Peace.